This is Dr. David Mathewson and his teaching on New Testament Greek 3. This is session number one, Introduction to Greek 3. Well, welcome. I am uh, Dave Mathewson. I teach New Testament and Greek at Denver Seminary in Denver, Colorado. And uh, I am here for uh, a number of sessions to teach Greek 3. And what I want to do in this first video is sort of explain what is second year, th second year Greek or th Greek 3. How does that differ from what you would usually learn in first year Greek in a Greek 1 and 2 course or introductory Greek? Uh, with introductory Greek or Greek 1 and 2 or first year Greek, you spend a lot of time memorizing. You memorize vocabulary, you learn a lot of endings, you kind of learn the ins and outs of the language and basically how it works. Uh, you do learn some grammar. You have to to understand a language, but if you've taken first year Greek, you realize, or any language, uh, you realize that the first year is very memorization heavy and form heavy. You f spend a lot of time memorizing and learning forms. You focus on memorizing endings. Uh, and as I said, you focus a lot of time on acquiring vocabulary, a large enough vocabulary that uh, you can translate the New Testament. And uh, a lot of Greek 1 courses, or, or Greek 1 and 2 or first year Greek courses will introduce you the vocabulary that occurs 50 times or more in the Greek New Testament. So uh, Greek 1 and 2 or first year Greek, uh, you'll spend a lot of time with memorization, learning the forms, learning the vocabulary learning kind of the ins and the outs and the nuts and the bolts of the language and how it works and maybe acquire a little bit of grammar. Uh, by contrast, uh, second year Greek or Greek 3 and 4, depending on how uh, a, a school is set up and how they teach the Greek sequence, but in second year Greek, you focus less on memorization and you focus a lot more on acquiring grammatical categories that describe what is going on in the language. So, uh, it, for example, in first year Greek, you spend a lot of time memorizing the case endings in nouns, for example. And you've learned the nominative case and the genitive case and the dative and the accusative, for example. And you spend a lot of time being able to identify those and memorizing the endings that the, and, and the basic meaning of those cases. In a second year Greek course, you don't memorize basically any more endings. You've learned them all. Uh, but now you're going to learn different functions of the genitive case or the nominative case or the dative or accusative case. You're going to learn how those cases can function in the context and the significance of that for exegesis and interpretation. And, and, and so in second year Greek, there's a lot more emphasis on grammatical function. Uh, whereas in first year Greek, there's more emphasis on forms, uh, not exclusively, but uh, spending a lot of time you have to to learn a language. And that's true not only of Greek, but if you've ever studied German or French or uh, some other language that is uh, not native to you, uh, you have to spend a lot of time memorizing and learning and acquiring skill and identifying the forms and the endings and the vocabulary. And the same is true with Greek. Uh, but once you get to second year Greek, I wouldn't say the memorization stops. Uh, you'll still learn new, new vocabulary. You do need to memorize labels that, that, that are, help describe the different grammatical constructions. So for example, when you get to the genitive case, you'll be learning labels like dis, uh, descriptive genitive or subjective genitive, objective genitive, and don't worry, we'll talk all about those. Uh, but you 
you will do some memorization, but, but the focus is not on memorizing endings unless you've forgotten them, or memorizing vocabula vocabulary unless you've forgotten that. Although you will acquire more vocabulary as you translate and as you work with text and translate text and do exegesis, you will acquire more vocabulary. It's just that that's, the, the focus is now more on the grammatical function of the different forms and the things you learned in first year Greek. So that will be the focus of this course, uh, looking at uh, grammatical functions and how those affect interpreting the text and how that affects exegesis of the New Testament text. And uh, not so much memorizing the endings and, and memorizing vocabulary. And the rest of this course will introduce you uh, to some of the more significant grammatical categories and grammatical functions of what you've learned in a first year Greek course so that now you can apply what you've learned in first year Greek to actually interpreting uh, from the standpoint of the grammar of the Greek New Testament. Now uh, this will enable you to be more skilled at interpreting uh, the New Testament. And it will also allow you to use some of the tools more effectively. So wh when you're using a commentary that talks about the subjective genitive or an aorist tense form, you're going to know what that means. Uh, and you'll be able also to evaluate that in light of what you've learned. It, it enables you to use a different level of tools because you'll be familiar with the discussion, you'll be familiar with those categories, those grammatical categories that grammars and other commentaries, more upper level and advanced commentaries, utilize. Uh, let me say a few things about the way, uh, by means of introduction, by the way that we will, uh, about the way that we will approach uh, Greek grammar in this course. First of all, is uh, I take what is often called a minimalistic approach to Greek grammar. Uh, that is, I want you to focus on the major and basic functions of the different grammatical constructions that you've learned. So again, for example, uh, some grammars when it comes to the genitive case, if I can use the, the case system in, in Greek as an example of, again, when it comes to the genitive case, you'll find some grammars teaching you 30, 35 different functions of the genitive, and even admitting that some of them are, are, are more based on the broader context or, or are rare or something like that. And uh, th the approach of, of this course will be more minimalistic, uh, which should be good news to you. It means you have a, a little bit less to try to master, uh, but it, it, it focuses more on the meaning of the forms, the, the meaning and how they function in the context and, and avoids multiplying endlessly or needlessly uh, different functions so that we'll focus on uh, a dozen or so, a dozen or little more functions of the genitive case instead of trying to learn 30, uh, 40 different usages. So uh, a, a minimalistic approach to Greek grammar. Uh, kind of related to that is what I also call a more realistic view of Greek grammar. Uh, often, uh, although uh, years and years ago the Greek language was often seen to be kind of a Holy Ghost language, a special language that was inspired by and was in, uh, almost infused by the Holy Spirit to communicate God's Word in a way that no other language could. Although that uh, has been avoided uh, lately and that view has kind of disappeared, uh, sometimes I still hear people speaking as if there's something special about the Greek language. It's such a beautiful, flowery, wonderfully complex and, 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 and just full of meaning that made it suitable for God to communicate His Word as if no other language could have done so. And, and sometimes I hear uh, scholars making statements similar to that, or at least treating the Greek 
Greek language as if it was a wonderfully precise language. And, and it was so precise and so full of meaning and, and, and such a, a beautifully uh, precise language that no other language could be used to communicate, could have been used to communicate God's will uh, except for the Greek language. Uh, however, I think that we need to approach the Greek language more realistically and recognize that Greek is no better or worse than any other language. It, it has all the shortcomings, it has all the strengths that any language has. And the same is true of English or whatever language that you may speak or other languages that you speak. Uh, all languages are able to communicate and they all have their strengths, they all have shortcomings or limitations. No language is any better than any other. They do, they communicate in different ways. Every language kind of has its own grammar, uh, so to speak. But one of the things that uh, recent studies in linguistics that is now making its way into uh, the Greek language has demonstrated is that Greek is no better or worse than any other language. So we want to take a realistic view of language, of the Greek language. We don't want to treat it as some special uh, language that's been infused with, with meaning and, and is the only language capable of communicating God's revelation. It just happens to be the language that was spoken and that was common and that was utilized uh, during the first century when God chose to reveal himself in written form to his people. Uh, but we want to take, uh, again, a realistic view of the Greek language and try to treat it as much as we can as a language. Uh, the content of it, yes, is special. What, what the uh, New Testament teaches is, is unique and special and important. And, and uh, the language of the Greek New Testament is that which God has chosen to communicate his will uh, to humanity. For that reason, it, it is special. But as a language, it's no different than, than any other language. And so we want to treat it. Uh, like another language. Uh, the fact that God's Word is inspired, and I wholeheartedly subscribe to that personally, uh, but uh, if you hold to the fact that the Bible is the inspired Word of God, that doesn't somehow make the Greek language change into something that it's not. Uh, the Greek language is still a language that was utilized by uh, human beings in the first century and will uh, try to treat it that way. Another important principle that will guide us as we work through uh, second year Greek in this course is that we want to treat the Greek language descriptively rather than prescriptively. And what I mean by that is sometimes I still hear comments like this, well, uh, you know, Paul's use of Greek in this verse was really sloppy or bad, or, or uh, you know, the, Mark's Greek is, is rough and it's, it's bad and it's, it's, it's second rate, or, you know, the Greek of the New Testament is, is, has lost the, 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 the beauty and the, the flowery nature of the classical Greek that came before it. And, and often the Greek language then is treated prescriptively. That is, there, there's some standard that we come with that, uh, you know, the New Testament Greek doesn't seem to match up with, so we think that it's, it, it's, it's more sloppy, it's less precise, or something like that. And those are prescriptive uh, uh, judgments that we bring to the Greek of the New Testament. And, and I say this not because necessarily you will do that, but you will often read that in commentaries or other tools. People saying, well, the, the Greek here is really bad or sloppy, or the author should have said this, or, or this, is, this is ungrammatical, or, or something like that. Uh, but instead, we need to treat the New Testament descriptively, New Testament Greek. That is, wh what grammar is meant to do is simply describe the way language is used. 
It's meant to describe how users use language, not to prescribe how they should use it or how they should have used it uh, as if there's some you know, standard that uh, they fall short of, but instead to describe how it is that the users use Greek. Yes, there are rules in grammar, uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, grammar depends on how people use language. And so we're going to avoid, and I want you to be aware of when you're using commentaries and other tools, we're going to avoid being prescript, too prescriptive in our approach. And, and uh, just be aware of those things such as, you know, the grammar here is sloppy or bad or, or uh, you know, the author should have said use this construction instead of this as, as opposed to describing what it is we find in the Greek New Testament, describing how the authors are using language. So that is a little bit about uh, how we will approach Greek in this course. And again, we will uh, focus primarily on grammatical function, learning the function, different function of the grammatical forms that you learn throughout the uh, first year of Greek. Again, you learned what the endings of the present tense and the basic meaning of a present tense verb, the endings and the basic meaning of an aorist tense verb. Now we'll look at how those things function and we'll learn labels. Uh, but again, I'm, uh, I'm less concerned about you memorizing the labels, although you should because that will make you faster as you use the commentaries and grammars when you find them using things like a, a consitive aorist or a descriptive genitive or, or a, a, a dative of reference or whatever. When you find those things, our first class condition, when you find that language, you don't have to go look it up. You'll know what they're, they're referring to. Uh, but the, the, the the focus will be in the function. I, I like to call, sometimes I, I, I think we get caught up in what I like to call pin the tail on the grammatical construction. If you remember the an old game, it kind of dates me, but pin the tail on the donkey. Uh, so I call it pin the tail on the grammatical construction, pin the label, that's it. Pin the label on the grammatical construction. As if your main goal is just to go through and label everything, but unless you can describe what that means and how that's important and how that affects the way you interpret the text, that doesn't do you a lot of good. So we'll focus more on the function, the grammatical function, and how that influences the way you interpret and read a text, as well as hopefully acquiring the, the, the labels and learning them uh, so that you're able to identify, especially when others use those labels. And as we work through the Greek New Testament, we will take a more realistic view of language, of the Greek language. Uh, we will try to treat it as a language, and we will take a more descriptive approach, simply describing what appears to be going on in this text. How is the author using uh, the Greek language? So I'm glad you're on this uh, journey with me as we work through uh, second year Greek and as uh, we learn the grammar in a more detailed way, uh, but uh, hopefully in a way that will make your interaction with and your engagement with the New Testament a more profound experience. This is Dr. David Mathewson and is teaching on New Testament Greek 3. This is session number one, Introduction to Greek 3.